Oh God, you cry out to us in the wilderness. Help us to keep awake and listen. Amen. 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 Please be seated. Before offering my sermon today, I just want to say what a great blessing and joy it is to be leading worship with the Reverend Kevin Vediak. <laughs> many of you know Kevin well, you've known him for so long, uh, so many beautiful ministries offered in this cathedral through the years. And uh, now he is uh, a member of the Sacred Order of Priests in the Episcopal Church, having been ordained here yesterday. And it is a special blessing uh, to be present for someone's first Eucharist. And Kevin today will be leading our Eucharist here and maybe even open to blessing you at the end of the service. Uh, so Kevin, thank you so much. It's a great joy. The Prophecy of the River Jordan. Here, people of earth formed from the clay at the side of a riverbank, formed from the dust of stars, of one being with all that lives and all that flows. Hear and listen to my story, to my vision, to my call. Mark my meaning. I am the River Jordan whose waters flow through salvation history. I am spoken of in Torah, in prophecy, in gospel. I am part of the flow of water that reaches back to the watery deep that was at creation. I am of the same substance that was breathed over by the spirit, ruach, water that holds life growing in the womb, water that carries life shapes valleys and cleanses bodies. I am fed by three rivers, all of which rise at the foot of Mount Hermon. The power of my waters cut a gorge through basaltic barriers. I am swift, and at the time of Moses and the time of Jesus, I was winding and strong. It was I, the River Jordan, who stood so still that the Hebrew people could cross over me into the plain of Moab, into the land of Canaan, after wandering in the wilderness for 40 years. Behold, a man came to me from the city, a man named John, restless and beautiful, with clear and wise eyes, and electrified with a holy vision. He came out from Jerusalem, from the regional center of power. He came away from the great temple where sacrifices offered and the religious leaders flow in and out in their beautiful robes. He came out to me from the palaces of Pilate and Herod and the stables with the strong stallions carrying Roman legions, from the money changers exploiting the people in the temple and the tax collectors demanding the coins that enrich the empire. John came out, far beyond the security of the city wall, to a place far from his comfortable bed. He came from a high place, a city built on a hill. To me, the river with the lowest elevation of any river in the world. He came down to me, the river, finding in me the right setting to begin a revolution. This man, John, knew prophecy. He knew the words of Isaiah, who spoke to God's people in their confusion and dissipation while they were in exile, promising them return, saying, when you pass through waters, I will be with you. Through rivers, you shall not be swept away. John knew Micah who said, let justice roll down like waters. Let justice roll like an ever-flowing stream. This man, John, saw God's yearning for justice for his people and the abundant and ordered creating power and work of God. He was a man of few needs, living simply, wearing clothing made from simple offerings from nature, 
taking only what he needed, practicing a simple way, connected to the wilderness, to the camel, to the river, to the honeybee. John came and he stood in my waters, letting himself be purified in them and calling on others to do the same, proclaiming a baptism of repentance, turning back to God's love, turning back to the interconnectedness of all of creation, which is what was at the heart of God's yearning from the beginning. His call was a timeless call, a call to the waters, to the rivers, to the streams and the oceans. It was a call that rang out to the people of Jerusalem and all of Israel in his day and rings down through the centuries to all people everywhere in all lands. Repent of your disconnection from God's ordering from the illusion that you do not need the wilderness and its animals and its vines and its trees and its wild brush, its riches of birds and beasts. Repent from your taking and taking and taking, your consuming and over-consuming. Repent of turning your neighbor into a utility from which labor can be extracted and then that person discarded. Repent from polluting the waters and poisoning the waters. Repent from cutting off water to those most in need of it. Repent from allowing people desperate for a new life to drown on boats and putting barriers in the water so that they become a tomb rather than a route to a new life. Repent of turning my West Bank into the edge of an occupied territory. Repent of diminishing me, the Jordan River, so that I am now a dull brownish shade of green full of stewage, sewage and smell due to climate change and overuse. Repent of leaving landmines from your horrific warfare on my banks and cutting off access to me from most of the people living on my banks, both in Jordan and in Palestine. John's call 2,000 years ago, standing barefoot in my currents, was a call to all generations to make straight our paths, straight as Amos's plumb line, straight as a rushing river, straight as a highway for our God. My waters cooled John's legs as he stood there hour after hour, as people from all the Judean countryside and from Jerusalem arrived on my banks, some yearning to enter my stream and repent, some curious, some cautious, some not very sure they wanted to be there. I held him with thanksgiving and lent him whatever energy I could. So glad I was for his very being, for this one whom I knew would give everything for this message he was offering. For I knew that in his age, as in every age, to give oneself to the water of repentance has a cost. Standing in my water, John shouted the beginning of the good news, but it was just a beginning, and it was news greater than his calling to complete. For behold, one day I looked and beheld as John, sweaty with effort, hoarse with proclaiming, exhausted by those who came just to see what all the commotion was about, more curious than repentant, expecting a bruised reed and encountering the greatest of all the prophets, but not really able to see that. On a day such as this, as John carried on, the horizon shimmered. My waters trembled brightly and with expectation. And I saw walking towards my banks another man, 
a man I'd not seen before, but whom John clearly knew. And as he approached, I knew, I knew then that John's work was part of something much bigger and powerful in a way I could not fully comprehend, but into which I was called. I, the river, was called. I, the water, already so indivisibly connected to the fabric of all that is, was being called into an even greater vocation. So that in generations to come, those who follow this one, this man, this Jesus, will honor the water and use it to bless. Those who follow this man, this holy one, will be baptized both with water and with the Holy Spirit. That spirit that blew over me at creation and thereby re-knit into the fabric of the sacred, the source, and enkindled to share the living water. As they rise up out of the water, they will pledge to provide it to all children, to cleanse it of the toxic chemicals that lead to blindness and disease. They will pull those drowning in sorrow and drowning in debt from the miry deep and restore them to fullness of life. So that, like John will do later in his life, when someone asks them, is this the Messiah? Is Jesus the one? It will be said. Go tell everyone what you hear and see. The blind receive their sight and the lame walk. Lepers are cleansed and the deaf hear. And the dead are raised and the poor have good news preached to them. And blessed is the one who takes no offense at the living water. I am the River Jordan, still flowing, still speaking. I'm speaking to you, a generation in which two billion people do not currently have safe drinking water, and 3.6 billion people lack access to safely managed sanitation, a generation in which war ravages countless lives and degrades the waters and kills the crops and robs the coffers of funds that could be used to bless and to restore. Will you listen? On my banks, the Baptist cry announces that the Lord is nigh. Awake and hearken, for he brings glad tidings of your calling, your connection, your strength of voice and body to be repairers of the breach. These are the tidings of the King of Kings. Amen.